So if I'm wrong about anything, I'm willing to admit that. I'm just uh, saying my bit. Hey everybody, what's going on? Just thought I'd uh, stop on my lunch break here and film a video because you know, this is one of these things that's just kind of been going around a lot. I've been seeing a lot of <laughs> divided opinions and, and there seems to be a lot of conflict surrounding this impossible burger. So I wanted to kind of put my thoughts out about it. And, you know, it, it really comes down to a few different things. But the biggest thing for me, and actually just, just quick disclaimer, this video is just my opinions, my personal beliefs upon this situation based upon the information that I have and based upon how I feel about uh, the various different aspects of the Impossible Burger. So obviously it's up to you to decide what you're okay with, what you're, you know, uh, where you draw the line on certain things and the information that you have will obviously help you make the decision for you. I'm not here to change anybody's mind and you know what, honestly, I, I don't really care what someone else's thoughts are on it just clear this notification here there we go don't want to really get into too much you know i don't, I don't want to argue about it i don't really care all that much about what you decide but this is just my thoughts on it wanted to share it so essentially you know the the big thing about the impossible burger aside from you know potential of cross-contamination because they cook it on the same grill well honestly if you're going to a non-vegan place or you know a not exclusively vegan place you have to deal with the possibility of cross-contamination and that's going to be different you know, or that's going to be the same whether it's the impossible burger the beyond burger at anw whatever it is and you need to just kind of draw those lines for yourself you know me personally i don't really care about the potential of some cross-contamination because i mean it's not contributing to the uh, the further suffering of any animals and for me personally, I, I know having worked in plenty of kitchens and stuff, you know, the, they don't just like cook a bunch of beef burgers and then just not clean the grill and throw the veggie burgers on top of there. I mean, if they do, that's a pretty poor practice. But in reality, that doesn't create any animal suffering. It, while it's not ideal, it, it doesn't really like that doesn't deter me too much. I ask, I have conversations with the staff to try to like understand their processes, but like that's not going to be the limiting factor for me, a little bit of cross contamination. Again, you do what you need to do about that. But the biggest thing about the, the Impossible Burger is that, you know, there was, uh, there was this testing on these 188 rats. And so, you know, a lot of people will say, hey, but that testing was required by the FDA or that testing, you know, needed to happen so they could distribute their food. They could, you know, market it and stuff like that. From my understanding, from the research that I've done and from what I've seen, that is not the case. The testing that was done on the like the soy hemoglobin or whatever it was, was additional testing that was actually not required by the FDA. And was not required to make the deal with uh, with Burger King to get the get the burgers nationwide. Now that's just from what I've seen. If somebody can can show me definitively that that testing was actually required by the FDA or whatever whatever else, then you know please link it below. But from what I'm seeing, that wasn't required. So for me that's kind of like the line for me i mean i'm not going to call anybody a non-vegan i'm not here to say i'm better than you or have any of these bs kind of like statements about it i i don't that's not what this is about that's just saying that for me if the testing was in fact not required so that that product could be released to the masses then i personally will choose not to to eat the impossible burger now it's not here in canada in our burger kings here they're still using whatever other veggie burger it is that they have um, so it's not really a big thing where you know i, I want to rush out and grab an impossible burger it doesn't really matter to me um, you know i i just i want to say though that even though i wouldn't get this burger personally the same way that I wouldn't go and buy shampoo that was tested on animals or whatever for no reason. Um, even though I'm not going to go get the Impossible Burger for myself, I actually still believe that its existence in the market, and especially in a fast food chain, 
is an important step to getting people to eat less meat. And I know that, you know, reduce vegetarianism, that's not the goal. The end goal is complete and utter animal liberation. I'm 100% with you on that for anybody who says that. But, um, you know, because we we live in a capitalist society and because food is such a sensitive and important role in most people's lives, especially here in the, in, in the Western world where, you know, we, we want to run out and grab a burger or something, you know, this is important for basically for meat eaters, not, not for vegans. This is important for the general public to have this plant-based option that's going to change their perception about plant-based foods and ultimately reduce their intake and reduce their demand for more animal suffering. So in that sense, is it, you know, I mean, I never want to like just make it a numbers game because it's dangerous when you start thinking about animal lives as simply numbers. But in that sense, does the 188 rats, um, you know, was that, was it worth it if you wanted to look at it mathematically? I mean, no, I'm still not going to justify those, uh, those deaths. It's not like they just tested on them and whatever. They actually fed a bunch of this item, this, uh, this, this one, you know, chemical to the rats and then actually dissected them and, and did some testing and stuff. So, um, you know, it's not like they, they just had them there and they were free range and they were just feeding them some to see if there were any negative effects. Not that it would make it any better, but obviously the extremity, the extremes of the test parameters um, should be made clear as well. This wasn't like um, in any way a positive outcome for these rats. But in, in any case, you know, I think it is still good to have products like this on the market for meat eaters who want to move towards more plant-based foods. And again, supply and demand, living in a capitalist society, you know, it sucks. You don't have to like the game, but sometimes you just have to play it. Does that mean that you need to support a burger that tested on animals? No, of course not. There are so many other options out there. Like I love Beyond Burgers, I love Light Life Foods. And you know what, maybe some of their ingredients needed to be tested at some point in time to um, to pass, you know, the FDA standards or whatever else. And if that was the case, then, okay, I can understand that. I'm not happy about it. But if there was required testing that was done on those products or many of the products that are considered vegan nowadays, then, okay. I mean, you have to accept that that's part of the the corporate game or the industry game. And it sucks, but it is what it is. Again, because of the unnecessary testing or the unrequired testing on these rats, I personally will choose not to eat the Impossible Burger. But I have absolutely no ill will towards anybody who still wants to promote it and still try to like get it out there as an option for meat eaters especially to choose that over, you know, the standard Whopper that's obviously made out of a dead cow. So, you know, there's, there's still merit in promoting a plant-based burger. Just uh, labeling it as vegan, um, eating it as a vegan, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not hating on anybody. I'm not going to shame anybody. I'm not going to call anybody out for it. I don't really care all that much in the sense that it's not worth my time and effort to try to convince somebody else on, on what is good or what isn't good or what is vegan or what isn't vegan. I'm not even going to get into that. So, um, like, don't even try to start anything in the comments, honestly. I, I don't. It's, it's not going to happen. All I can do is just talk about my perspective, how I feel about it, and what I'm going to do about it. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, put my thoughts out there. No impossible burgers for me, which kind of sucks. I mean, it looks good, but hey, it's it's not worth it to me. There's so many other options. In fact, I'm going to go back to the office now, eat some nice seitan barbecue ribs that Jamie made up for me last night, baked potatoes smothered in vegan margarine, and some simulated bacon bits and uh, some roasted Brussels sprouts just eat like an incredible meal and um, you know where there was no animal testing so that's that anyway um, I would be interested in knowing what your respectful comments are down below let's not turn this into a shit show let's not turn this into a fight um, it is unfortunate that there's been so much back and forth and division uh, between vegans as a result of this uh, it's always good to be able to have rational, calm conversations about it. But I can understand why people get upset and why people would, would point to that unnecessary testing and say, hey, like, 
you know, what the hell? Why would you support it if that was the case? And again, I haven't spent a lot of time researching this. This has been something where I literally looked things up for maybe 10 minutes before filming this video after seeing a lot of back and forth on different social medias between uh, vegans, you know, for the last few days. So I have basically the experience of seeing everybody's arguments for the last couple of days and then making sure doing a little sanity check and checking some things out on you know just googling some things for about 10 minutes before making this video so if i'm wrong about anything i'm willing to admit that i'm just uh saying my bit so in any case i'm gonna wrap it up there i'm gonna go eat those ribs and baked potato and brussels sprouts enjoy my meal cruelty free of course do what you can today and every day to reduce that animal suffering, to eliminate it wherever possible. Um, please choose compassion, live vegan, and we'll see you in the next one, folks. Peace.